Well-designed youth programs encourage leadership by promoting self-esteem and confidence. You've probably been part of programs like the Boy Scouts, the Girl Scouts, or even the Boys and Girls Club of America. These clubs are some of the most popular and respected after-school programs for children across the country. Tonight, I want to introduce you to a new youth program that's bringing the arts to our children right here in Los Angeles. I'm so happy you're joining us. From Los Angeles, this is KLCS PBS. Welcome to Everybody with Angela Williamson, an innovation, arts, education, and public affairs program. Everybody with Angela Williamson is made possible by viewers like you. Thank you. Ari, thank you so much for being here. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Of course, well thank you for having me, Angela, I appreciate it. Um, yeah, so my name is Ariana Angelique and I'm the founder of the nonprofit organization Rock Era. Rock stands for Regardless of Color. So I wear many hats. I am a social activist, I am a youth advocate, I am a content creator for children's film and television, and I'm also an athlete, which I'm sure we'll get to all of that in a second. But um, I grew up here in Los Angeles, um, Southern California myself. Grew up in a lower income community, uh, grew up with my mother without a father. Uh, he was incarcerated my whole life and he passed away when I was 11 uh, while incarcerated. So this is personal for me. What I do with Rock Era is, um, is really personal. So I always tell this story. I was eight years old and I had a mentor come in and introduce me to the world of the arts. And Angela, it changed my life. I don't think I'd be sitting here with you right now had I not had this mentor come in and introduce me to the world of possibilities. It changed the trajectory of my life. I don't know where I'd be at this point without those mentors. So that is my main focus and my main goal now is to be that mentor that I had. Um, so I went to high school performing arts uh, in Orange County. Then I went, moved to New York City and went to a performing arts college. Then I traveled the world for 12 years and was a professional actress. I got to see the world, experience culture, and I wouldn't have had that that opportunity without those mentors. So that brings me to, um, to rock era. Well, and even though you were traveling around the world, mm -hmm. your heart was still here. Of course. So your heart's here, mm -hmm. you've traveled, mm -hmm. you've come back home. Right. And what happens next for Ariana? So once I, I, I knew there was something else that I had to do. I knew that, that performing was, it was fulfilling, it was incredible. I played every dream role, I saw the world. But like you said, I knew there was more for me. So I ended my career in the end of 2018 and I decided to create content for children's film and television. And the reasoning behind that was um, where kind of where my activism began was to create more diverse content for children's film and television. Growing up, I didn't have a character to relate to on TV and still, in my opinion, there's not enough representation. So my goal was to bring diverse character to the forefront. I have a very exciting project coming up that I can't say much about. But I will say that um, like, welcome to Hollywood. Welcome to Hollywood, <laughs> and get you know there will be a an incredible fierce character coming out that will be a role model to many in in, in the animated world. So once that happens, I'll you know talk to you about that. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> no, that's okay because I even though you can't tell us all the details, mm -hmm. you mentioned something and you touched upon it. But I want to dig a little deeper about sure. it. Sure. Um, because there's something missing there, and mm -hmm. there's a reason why you are trying to fulfill that role. Right. You talked about role models, but right. what is it about those role models that will make a difference? Because you had that difference in your life. Yeah. So what do you want to bring without telling, I know, telling us all the content. Can you share a little bit about that? Yeah, I just think it's important, like I said, for children to see themselves represented, to know that it is normal to be, to, to, to be proud of our skin, to be proud of our hair, to see ourselves represented, whether it's eth you know, ethnicity, whether it's um, learning differences, whatever it is, it is important that we tell our children that they matter, that their life is important. So that's, for me, why I created this character for this, uh, this, this feature film. And my goal is for it to, to be around the world, for as many children to see it as possible. So that's kind of what I did with that. But as far as the mentoring, that's where the birth of Rock Era and we're only a year old. You know, we just um, started last year. So you started during the pandemic. We started during the pandemic. How does that work? <laughs> I know. So I, I, I mentioned here I'm a, a social activist as well. I really yeah. care about um, you know justice and equality. And um, in the beginning of the the movement I, per se, mm -hmm. 
um, I knew, you know, I was in the streets as an activist, but I also knew that I was fighting for our future generation. I always said that. So, and I, and I just sat back and thought, you know, what do I want to do with this movement? And I thought about the kids. And so immediately we started going out to these different areas in Watts and in Compton and South LA and doing, you know, what we could. We knew the kids were falling back, falling behind, whether it's um, academically or mm -hmm. physically, you know, they weren't getting, or socially. So we would just show up and we would play with the kids for hours. You know, we'd make sure everyone was safe and had their, you know, their, um, their mask on and everything. But, and then it grew and it grew and it grew. And now we are, you know, all over Watts. We have three different community uh, housing projects that we, that we're in. And it's just um, incredible how fast we have grown. But for me, it's about the children, you know, really. It's why, it's my purpose is to be that mentor and to just instill in their lives that they, that they matter and that there is a world of possibilities out there, you know. So that's really what Rock Era is. We are focused on bringing in the untraditional, which I think sets us apart from other nonprofit organizations. Like I said, I didn't have access to the arts until these mentors came in and showed me, showed me the opportunity, showed me what that was. So we bring in anything from, you know, performing arts to fine arts to untraditional sports. I also mentioned I'm an athlete and I'm an obstacle course racer. I don't know if you know what that is, no. but it's explain it because obstacle even if course I don't racing. Know, if I knew it, yeah. maybe our viewers don't know it. Okay. So explain it. So it's um, obstacle course racing is running mixed with obstacles. So it's about a like, for example, the hardest one I've done is 13 miles of running. And then there's 60 obstacles within that within the, within that 13 miles. Oh, so oh. you know exactly, and it takes you got to be strong. You got to have you know you got to be strong and fast. So wow. it's you know, and that's so for me. I don't want to just bring in soccer, football, and basketball. They're used to that. Let's show them something else. Let's teach our babies how to swim. Yes. Let's teach them you know tennis. You know, there's just so many. You know, an obstacle course racing. Yeah, my son's a tennis player. There so you he, go. Yes, teach him See? tennis. <laughs> exactly. And, you know, just teaching him about healthy, healthy lifestyles. We, yes. um, I also believe in um, community enrichment. So not only do we have our kids programs, we also are starting gardens. We're partnering with different um, garden organizations and we are going into these communities and we've already started two gardens and are trying to help and, and create, um, you know, healthy food and, and a sense of community and having something of their own and beaut beautifying the area as well. So we do a lot and we have uh, partnerships now already with Children's Institute, which is a great organization and we are already kicking off our arts program with them. And our goal is to, I'd love to see Rock Arts, our arts program in uh, LAUSD eventually, that's the goal. You know, and it's tailored for our low income, you know, underserved black and brown children. This is important, this time is heavy. The wor it's a heavy time for the world right now. And I feel like we tend to forget that our children are watching. Mm -hmm. Our children are experiencing this. So that's my passion for everything I do, you know, and it's, I'll, I'll tell you this too. Um, you know, it's important when coming into these communities, you need to build relationships. So, you know, a lot of organizations, they come in, they give, and then they're gone. And for me, I show up. I show up every day. I show up as much as I can. I build relationships with the community members, with the children, with the parents. And so now, anytime I come in, I hear, you know, Miss Ari, and I just have kids from every angle just running to me, and that is why I do what I do. You know, I was that child that had those mentors, so it's, um, it's definitely, definitely my purpose. There are so many studies out there regarding two things that your organization is doing yeah. about the importance, especially on the emotional health mm -hmm. of children when they can actually be part of the arts. Right. And then you are also addressing something that's mm -hmm. very critical, but it's not just for the children, but for the families as well. Right. Um, what you're teaching them about nutrition, about you know, right. creating their own gardens right. and community, mm -hmm. and so. Are you seeing? I mean, I know you're very young, but tell me the changes that you're seeing. Already, I mean, with a couple of the kids, for example, there's a young, young, young kid named Demarcus, and he was our only, um, our only boy in our production of Annie, which I'll talk about in a second. And he was, in, he's incredible. He's a, he's a singer. He's a rapper. He's a dancer. And you know, it was hard to get him in at first. He was the only, you know, only boy. You know, so, but then eventually he did the show and there was 200 people there and he just, he killed it, you know? And so his mom called me the other day and said, hey, Miss Ari, I want to know, um, you know, I want to make sure that DeMarcus wants to make sure he doesn't miss your classes. He's signing up for football, but he wants to make sure that he can do your arts classes. So can we figure out a time and a schedule to where DeMarcus can do both? And to me, I got chills knowing that this young child wants to make sure that he has time for the arts now. Mm -hmm. You know, and she said, you know, he's, um, he wants to do this now. He's singing, he's dancing, you know, and I'm just, um, I'm, I feel like that's, that's an example of, of how this is working. 
and how I know that arts, the power of arts is so important. It is, not only is it it's self-expression, but it's a coping mechanism. It helps with trauma and healing. And you know, in these areas, in this demographic, our children need that more than ever. Well, we're getting ready to take a break, but before sure. we take a break, I want you to talk about yeah. this project okay. that you're working on because we're going to be able to see a little bit of it. So yes, we talk are. Talk about that. Okay, so after doing some uh, you know, uh, rehearsals with the kids at, at the Watts Empowerment Center in Watts, yes. I thought, let's do, a, let's do a show. you know. And so I told the kids, I said, we're going to do Annie. So I played them what Annie was. I'm sure you know the old, the old yes. motion picture, Annie. Yes. And I thought, you know what? We're in Watts. Why not do something a little more urban, a little more culturally fun. So we did Urban Annie. So I have three beautiful African-American girls that split the role of Annie. And the show was not only just a performance, but it was a, um, a calling, a, a, a bringing awareness to the fact that, as you know, the story is about orphans in the foster care system. And in my opinion, today, the foster care system is still pretty corrupt, and it's still targeting our black and brown families. So this show was not only a performance for the children, but it was also to bring awareness to what's going on. Part of community activism. Exactly, and that's for me, I, I found a way to marry my activism with my artistry. Yes. And that's what we've done. So you're gonna see um, Miss Candace, who's eight years old. She's one of our Annies. Oh. And you're gonna see Miss Briari, who is nine years old. And these girls, they are just incredible. And I'm so, so proud of them. And they're gonna, they're gonna sing a, a song tomorrow from the show. Oh, I should have brought Kleenex too. That's oh, yeah. the best song. You're gonna oh. need it. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Ari, yes. first of all, thank you for everything that you're doing yes, in the course. community Absolutely. because I know that you've given so much into it and you've done so much just within a year. Yeah. So I cannot wait to see what you do thank within you the so next much, five to 10 years. Okay. And thank you. <laughs> and also too, thank you for bringing these other two uh, or three incredible yes. guests that we'll see after yes, of this course. segment. So okay. thank you so much for thank that. Thank you. And you will want to definitely come back because I will introduce you to Dr. Cynthia Mendenhall, also known as Big Mama from Chosen Angels. But first, members of Rock Era will perform for us. So go grab your Kleenex and come right back. Jason, let's go see your room. America nationwide network of food banks to help provide meals to those in need. Join us at feedingamerica.org. The sun will come out tomorrow. Bet your bottom dollar that tomorrow there'll be sun. Just thinking about tomorrow. Clears away the cobwebs and the sorrows till there's none. When I stuck at the day, that's great and lonely. I just took up my chin and grin and say, Oh, the sun will come out tomorrow, so you gotta hang on till tomorrow. Yeah. 
When I was in foster care, I never knew when I would have to move. So I always had my suitcase ready to go. Then one day, I was adopted. My new parents opened their hearts and home to me. My parents cook my favorite breakfast for me every morning. My parents take me on trips I never thought I would go on. They gave me a home and an even better reason to use that suitcase. My parents aren't perfect, but they're perfect for me. I love you! Welcome back. I'm so glad you're here for my conversation with Dr. Big Mama from Chosen Angels. Big Mama, thank yes. you so much for being here. Thank you. You are doing such incredible work, and I just want you to start off by just telling us your story. First of all, I'd like to start off by saying thank you. After 30 years of serving and helping other people, I started off in the 80s helping people, helping organizations, because I I had the clientele, I had the numbers, I had the community, I was doing re-entry, I was doing uh, Boys and Girls Club, I was doing drill team, women's group, I was just doing everything positive, domestic violence, uh, trafficking, foster care, I was doing a lot. I was going to get the girls out the Boys and Girls uh, at the gym and the team post and the YMCA. It was three different organizations at that time, youth centers in Watson and Pure Courts. And I was a troubled youth because my mother was on drugs. So I would come get the girls out of each program and take them with me in the enemy hood or community. And that's how I started off with my career. And they said, don't worry about them, get hurt. We notice every time she peep or come through the door, she shift everybody, they follow her. If we get her, we can get the other youth. And that's what they did. The next time I came, they said, I got a job for you. I want you to watch all these baby kids. I say, I'm watching them bad kids. And she said, I'm gonna pay you. I wanna hire you. Cause I noticed we don't have no numbers, you taking them. And they did. The first day, I liked it. I liked the serving the kids. They had men mental issues. They had behavior um, problems. They had a lot of things going on in their home. I learned as I became adult, and that started my career. From there, I volunteered for 30 years. 30 years? Yes. Volunteering. And in, now I'm here. And you're here. Well, we are so honored that you're here because you can add a lot of insight to what has been happening right in our city right now. Yeah. And in these 30 years, have you seen any major changes that are either positive or negative that we need to know right now? A lot of things have changed because you've got to come to the leaders. You've got to work with the people in the community. The reason why a lot of things is not working now because they took it and put a lot of things in the mayor office. They need to get the intervention programs out the mayor office. The reason why I worked with us for 15 years, because no politician was involved, it was the community. The people's in the trenches and the people like me in the, in the trenches, I'm in the trenches. I know what the needs are. The Housing Authority City of Los Angeles, they have boards, racks in different community, but they're not on the streets like us. Even though you have intervention, I'm not in a lane, but when something happened, they come get me. Like if it's a murder, they say, go get Big Mama, I'm coming. Because a couple of weeks ago, it was all that red, all bloods, we a crib neighborhood. So they was like, oh my God, please go get Big Mama. And I went out there to talk to the mother and told her who I was and the grandmother. And, she, and let her know, I know you're in shock right now. Your son is right here on the ground, but I wanna let you know I got you. 
I lost two kids in 60 days, and she turned around and looked at me and said, I know you, I've seen you on TV, I see you, I know who you are. Thank you, I need you. Before we end our time today, I mean, just empowering. Your story is so empowering. You're still today in the community and you're working with Rock Era. What do you think would be a wonderful gift and legacy to all the work that Big Mama has done all 30 years? It's helping foster kids. I am them. I am them. I am them. I walk their shoes. Um, I wore other people's underwears. I wore people's clothes when I was growing up. I cooked uncooked food in elementary in the chair. I didn't try to feed my brothers and sisters. I'm the second oldest. My oldest sister took care of us. She really is my mother. And I am them foster kids. If you touch one, then I take over the whole family. So I, if they have nine kids, I meet that first one, then I, do, I deal with the whole family. And I help the mother get classes. I help the mother get furniture, beds, food, whatever she needs, I hold her hand till she get her kids back. If she don't get her kids back, it, I help it make sure it go to a relative. If I had to march in front of the DPSS, whatever I had to do to help the brown and black kids in our community and all over the world, that's what my job is and have been done. And I just want to say, I just need support. I just started Chosen Angel, and I would need donations and support to go to court or children court with some of these mothers. They don't have rights, so they lose custody. So that's why I'm, I'm here today, because I need support for transportation, clothing, um, domestic violence. A mother called me. Uh, she just got her house shot up by her, her, her baby father. And when I walked up, the LAPD say, oh, that's just a soldier. And I said, yes, yeah, she called me, and I want to um, put her up in a place. I'm not leaving until y'all put her in a safe place, and I'm going to stay with her till y'all relocate her. Okay, so we're going to help you with Chosen Angels. Yes, ma'am. In your mission to not only look at foster care, but to support women of domestic violence. How can we reach out to you personally? Are you on Facebook? Do you have a website? Or do we go through Rock Era? I would like for you to go to at Watts Chosen Angels, SJL, and Rock Era, and engagement, the change engagement. I would love for you to support me because I'm doing reentry, foster, I'm doing a lot. I've been spending my own money uh, supporting. They don't know that I, I'm not working. They don't know because these old clothes, mm -hmm. I know how to wash them to make them look new. So I don't have an income. I just got laid off from the um, work stores. So my last check, I just helped that mother from the best of violence. Uh, she came two days ago, and I bought her daughter some clothes because the principal called me. She put me down for mercy. Oh. And the principal called me and said, I don't want to call children's service, but the baby, the, the daughter is sick, and they gave your name. And I said, please don't call children's service. I'm on my way. And I got her, and I talked. She said, I'm still shook up for when he shot at me and my kids, 30 shots. And I need your support. So I need, I do mental health counseling. I refer services as well. But the people's got the big organizations and I do homeless. They uh, get the money, but they're not serving the people in Compton, Watson, South Central. So you're not seeing those funds go with, go no. to the community? No, ma'am. Oh. And I fed um, 15 people. So I went to the tents last night. Yeah. And the mother, the Hispanic mother, I went and knocked on her door because her kids keep coming to my house. I do free home homework club in my yard, and I do free snacks all night. And so the kids keep coming, and I say, Max, Max, my friend from so social justice, I say, that's a foster child, that's a foster child, that's a foster child, 
that's a foster child, that's a foster child. He say, that whole line? I say, yes. He say, oh my God. So as they work with me, they see me struggling. They see me struggling and they came. And now we here. I got the kids and the clientele, and I got the numbers, but I don't have the funding. But I don't tell people. Well, you know, we're telling them now. And as I close this show, you have been my most inspiring guest so far. And I thank just you. want to thank you for everything that you're doing to make sure our children are taken care of and protecting those who need protection. So thank you so much. We are going to make sure we get that information also to on, on this air as well. So thank, thank you. you. And thank you for joining us on Everybody with Angela Williamson. Viewers like you make this show possible. Join us on social media to continue this conversation that we had tonight. Good night and stay well.